Hi, you're watching Hindustan Times and I am Aditi Prasad. Uh, Joe Biden is the 46th president of the United States. He took oath with a really upbeat call to heal a nation which has been torn by deep schisms over the past a uh, few years uh, you know he immediately erased some of donald trump's uh you know most divisive politi uh, policies that was one of the first things he did when he sort of uh, entered the white house i have with me former diplomat meera shankar an hd consulting editor from at pal chaudhary yeah. to o biden's high to unpack Joe Biden's uh, you know uh, uh, inaugural speech very little was evident from what he said in his inaugural speech about America as the you know the global watchdog so to speak um how, how do you see that going to play out is he going to be more occupied with domestic politics given the deep divisions in the american socio political uh, setup as of now uh then play the role which largely the world has looked upon america to be playing as the the sort of the watchdog uh, of the of the rest of the world i think uh, he mentioned uh, foreign policy very briefly uh i think uh, saying that america will restore dem democratic values and will once again be a beacon uh, for the world and then he talked about repairing relations with traditional allies and engaging with the world so what he signaling is a willingness to engage much more in international institutions including the united nations the who and of course rejoining the paris accord uh and uh the theme that he has uh, outlined in his foreign policy of uh, rebuilding relations with his nato allies which had come uh under some tension because of trump's unilateral economic policies uh vis-a-vis -vis the european union uh mm. and also rebuilding ties with uh, traditional allies in asia i think this has been a theme japan south korea australia and with strategic partners but i think given the context and what has happened in the united states on 6 january the assault on the congress uh, uh with, by violent mobs i think the focus was on this i mean that really is the historical context in which he is taking over in which the transition is taking place so clearly his message had to be far more domestic pramit let me bring you in here because you have a point of view on this team that he's built together what do you feel that team biden this administration that he's put together how is it how is that team uh, likely to deal with the rest of the world especially uh, in our context china india um yes he's brought in a team and i think it's a reassuring team from the perspective of india Uh, we were concerned i think that this was going to be a repetition of the obama administration especially the first obama administration which had taken a very soft line uh, on china but he's brought in uh, people like jake sullivan uh, tony blinken but what i think pop arguably one of the most important positions is in the national security council is the creation uh, of effectively an indo pacific posi uh, position which combines the south asia and east asia desks and puts them over under one man kurt campbell who has been a long standing supporter in fact he believes he's argued that the quad for example um was was his partly his creation um and uh, put them under a single indo pacific uh unit uh this indicates that this is going to be a very important part of his foreign policy and this was crucial because during the campaign uh a lot of his own uh, foreign policy advisors barely almost never mentioned the quad in fact the only one who did michel flornoy uh who was initially slated to be the head of the pentagon eventually had no position in the government so there was a concern i think that the quad was going to be underinvested uh by the white end administration but i think what we've seen now with the appointments that he's put in place that's not going to be the case ma'am of how do you feel uh the biden administration's response to china is going to be like well i think uh, you get a, a, a hint from the team kurt campbell who has been appointed the czar for the indo pacific 
if you will, uh, was the key originator. He was assistant secretary for the Asia Pacific in the State Department when I was there as an ambassador and was the key originator of uh, President Obama's rebalanced strategy towards the Asia Pacific, which uh, looked at the challenge posed by China and suggested really three elements of, uh, of building a better balance there. One was to strengthen US military bases in the region, Digo Garcia, Gam, uh, to strengthen US military alliances in the region, South Korea, Japan, Australia, to work with strategic partners such as India and Indonesia. And uh, then an economic element, which was the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Now, Trump has walked out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. And given that the constituencies which voted Trump to power, you know, those left behind by globalization, who feel they've had the raw end of the stick as a result yeah. of uh, globalization, that is still very much there. So how much would Biden be able and willing to rejoin the TPP, I think that's still a question. The military elements of the strategy, I think, will be put in place, including redeployments, you know, to create a stronger balance uh, of naval deployments and military deployments away from the Mediterranean towards the uh, uh, Indo-Pacific. Uh, the diplomatic and political element was to have very high level participation and engagement in all institutional structures in this region, you know, particularly along with ASEAN. So that I think is very much going to be there. And I would see, I would agree with Pramit that the Quad is certainly going to be uh, a key element uh, of the Indo-Pacific strategy. The Modi-Biden relationship uh, going forward, how do you see that playing out? I think that the relationship uh, will continue on its upward strategic trajectory uh, because the um, interests bringing the countries together uh, very much continue the challenge posed by China being the most important but also if Biden is looking to strengthen democratic values across the world, particularly in the developing world, then India becomes the logical partner for that. Um, as far as Prime Minister Modi is concerned, if you will go back uh, to the Obama administration, you know, there was a visa ban in place, which had been put in place by George Bush, by the way, by the Republicans, but it had continued. And despite that visa ban, uh, Prime Minister Modi took the institutional view that he needed America, we needed to build relations with America and established a very good equation with President Obama. Now, if you've read President Obama's uh, own accounts of uh, his uh, policies during his presidency, he has written of the importance that he attached to climate change and therefore right. the need to work with countries like India and with leaders like Modi. The same circumstances apply now. Uh, and uh, again, President Trump in his initial period actually uh, was a bit difficult with us, did not give Prime Minister Modi access uh, because he felt that Prime Minister Modi was too close to Obama. And then that was repaired and, you know, the whole institutional relationship and personal relationship took off. So I would imagine that there would be uh, an, a, a similar effort because for India, we have to work with whichever government is there in the United States and in the US, there is a broad bipartisan consensus for building the relationship with India. Uh, now on economic issues, I expect that some of the frictions which were there under President Trump will still be there because they preceded Trump as well, you know, on IPR, right. market right. access, opening of agriculture. But I think the Biden administration will have a more institutional basis of trying to resolve them, uh, less unilateralism, more dialogue.